I saw a reel recently that was like a meme, but it was of a church that was doing like a cover song of the Jonas Brothers. When I saw this reel, it awakened something in me that I've known was there the whole time. Churches doing weird series where they cover secular songs, but then make a whole sermon about it. Sometimes these covers are done really well, and sometimes they're not. So we're going to talk about them, and we're going to look at a few of them, and we're going to talk about why I think this is a wacky sort of thing to do, even if the intentions are maybe in a good spot. So let's cover some of this. So a lot of this was sent to me for like my cringe compilation follow-up but it ended up being its own video and it's worth its own video <laughs> so i was able to kind of hunt down the waffle house church and it seems to be action church in orlando and i don't really know the church i don't know anything about them but i was able to find the footage okay here we go here we go any minute now why is it so silent why is it so why does it take you so long? We never knew how to forfeit. We always knew how to talk it. Don't put nights to gasoline on the fire. Dude has a cool voice. He really does. They just seem to have auto-tuned the heck out of him but i am noticing it seems like they built an entire waffle house set that's wild so right now i'm noticing he is the only guy on the platform uh, just ton of ladies hanging out at the waffle house with this guy which if you've ever been to a waffle house i don't know that this is even close to reality <laughs> <laughs> this seems like the back of their platform, which makes me think, is the congregation behind this wall? And if that's the case, like the people that are there in person, are they not able to see <laughs> or are they see this on a screen? That's super weird. What am I going to do with all these ladies in the Waffle House? <laughs> How much money did they spend creating a fake tiled Waffle House? No, no, Whoa. Why is the electric blaring? This mix is kind of wacky. Oh man. Okay, yeah, so they pull the walls apart and they are greeted by a congregation going absolutely mild. They're not. I don't know that they're into this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, this dude's just like, okay. And then you see this dude sitting there. No one's no one's up and moving and grooving. Can you imagine walking out for this video and be like, Headstrong Father and I do. And you look and it's just people like, that's, that's enough of this. I do kind of want to know more about Action Church here. So let's go to their statements. So I've looked through their statements some, and right away, their first one, it says, we make it hard for people to go to hell by making it fun to go to church. I feel like in the New Testament, we never saw any of the disciples or the followers of Jesus ever say, guys, it's fun to be a Christian. You should, you should be a Christian because we're having a great time getting persecuted, beheaded, and murdered. To me, it just kind of seems like this is a reach out of the church to try to get people in and stay relevant. I don't know that it works. Apparently, we're way more current with this than I realized because it seems like this is only week two for them, and they did fast talk. Fast car, and I want to take it to anywhere. Maybe we can make a deal. Maybe together we can get somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he's got a he's got like a cool country voice. Still leads me to being like, why? <laughs> I also can't help but notice that the sermon title for this week is being content in difficult circumstances. And what that also tends to make me think is that they're just like pulling a song from the radio and then being like hmm what's a what's a concept from the bible we can force to fit this song fast car i could already kind of uh be a little bit biased i was camping with my wife one time and in the campground 
right across from us, there was a guy who was playing fast car out of his truck, and then it looped, and he played fast car again. And then it looped a third, and then a fourth time. And on the fourth time, I'm looking at Kristen saying, am I going to go over to this campground and stop fast car? I can't take it much more. All right, let's move on from Action Church because they're not the only ones doing this right now. Over here, we have Elevate Life Church. I tried to find full clips of this, but it seems like they're not streaming the footage from the series. I think they're calling it ETV and it's kind of uh, shaped like MTV parody or whatever. I think they may be playing it safe, maybe due to ridicule, but also playing it safe due to infringement problems legally. I believe in the This is like Timu Banu. Banu? I just got mixed up with Survivor. Bono. You know, I'm sure they're nice people, but why is this like a cruise ship entertainment thing? The only pass they get is that Bono from U2 is a professing believer, but I think it's like the cosplay that's happening right now. He's LARPing as Bono. Also, the lady's really into it. She is like, yes, I'm still she's like strutting and like slapping her thigh, and they've got this gospel choir like hyping him up. I'd be embarrassed uh, if I was at the church personally. But again, the fact that they're not posting any of this on YouTube or their website makes me really think about the legal implication of this because churches, they use CCLI for the most part to make sure they have a license to use all these worship songs that are written by people and also live stream them. So when you get outside of CCLI and you start pulling random songs off the radio, then you start having to deal with publishing from things like ASCAP or BMI. With that, though, some people would maybe argue that this is parody, but parody law really only covers humor and comedy rewriting. I don't know that this would fall under fair use either because some of them are changing lyrics and they're streaming it out there. I think they're stealing these songs. <laughs> Who's to say? I don't know, but churches tend to lean a little weird when it comes to using material. You know, they'll download YouTube videos that aren't theirs that you could pay for somehow and they'll use them in services, stream movies, or they'll do all this other stuff. I don't think that we get like a legal exemption from that. Anywho, it's not just the big churches doing this. I do see Cape Cod Church and they seem to be a mid-sized church. They did their best Pixar song. Life's like a road that you travel along with us one day here and the next day gone. Sometimes you stand, sometimes you turn your back to the wind. There's a world outside of your dark in the door. The blues won't haunt you anymore. But the brave are free. Life is a highway. I want to ride it all night long. It's just weird, right? Like, it just becomes increasingly obvious that this is like performative and that it's not really a part of worship. What I can't understand is who they think this is for because people my age and younger think it's like embarrassing for the most part. I mean, you can look at the comments on some of these things and it is just brutal. And then you'll look at like the crowd in the church and it's older people that are also seeming to not really like it. They're not fans of it. Who is it for? It seems to be for the staff and the volunteer teams that I guess think it's going to be fun. It really does come across like I've walked in a random place in Vegas and I'm watching like an Elvis impersonator. You know, that just feels sad. <laughs> I found another church and they seem to be just absolutely committed to this concept. Granger Church, they've got a ton of covers. I felt like this one, though, really took the prize. I really love it when Linkin Park is played at my church. I'm tired of being who you want me to be Feeling so faithless Lost under the surface It's a little bit flat. Every step that I take Is another mistake to you I've become so numb I can't feel you <laughs> so tired, so much more. Oh man, okay. It's just like, once again, who is this for? I think any Linkin Park fan is going to hear this and be like, uh, 
know. Let's let's take a look at some comments here. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite worship song, Numb by Linkin Park. T Pain moment. T Pain. T Pain. T Pain. Is she like auto tuned a lot? I'm becoming this all I want to. Why are they all commenting T Pain? T Pain sends his regards. Bruh, I love Linkin Park, but not in church, man. Okay, here's an interesting comment. Lyrics sound blasphemous in a church setting. A creative worship team should be consecrated toward the Lord only, especially when actively playing at church. Be more like me and be less like you. What happened to John 3.30? This is a super fair point, and I think that this is what people are running into when they start just trying to throw a random song in there. It's not with the church in mind. Probably going to wind up being a problem because they're not writing music for the church. As a whole, I think that it shows a really big misunderstanding with what the function of the church actually is. The purpose of the church is for the believers to actively teach them, for them to worship together, and to prepare them and equip them to go out. And yes, you want to be able to make something accessible by bringing people in, but that's not the core purpose of a church service. It's for the believers. So when these churches start kind of adjusting and thinking this will bring people in, this will bring people in, this will bring people in, it starts to feel very consumer based. You wind up sacrificing depth and teaching for a very surface level entertainment. Whatever you entertain people with to get them there, you're going to have to top to keep them. Not only that, but maybe the legal ramifications. That we see in scripture pretty plainly in the New Testament that we're supposed to be singing spiritual songs, hymns, and songs of praise and, and psalms. Things that are for the church. Some might argue that hymn writers did the same thing by adapting like bar tunes, and one could maybe argue that, but they changed the entire structure of the lyrics. And there weren't like the weird legal ramifications around it because a lot of them were like folk tunes and things like that. All I know is this video is flooded with comments of how bad it is and I don't think it's accomplishing what they hoped it would. Sorry. You know, I think that it's kind of sad because I think there are some people that are performing this, that their intentions are good. They're really pumped up to cover a song that's a lot of fun to play, but I don't think that that's enough to make it actually valuable in a church setting. And I find it difficult for me to sit there and watch this knowing that they've taken time away from worship music and from sermon to add this weird performative part of it. It just is too cloudy. Uh, that's my rant. That's what I got. I'll see you in another video. <laughs> Thanks to my patrons. Bye.